Georges, and welcome to everyone who's joining us via live stream today. We are certainly glad that you're all worshiping with us. Um, there are a few announcements, as we have been um, mentioning to you. Things are starting to fill back in on our calendar, so we hope you're paying attention to those and hope you're planning to join us for some opportunities that we have coming that will certainly be enjoyable for everyone. First of all, next Sunday is National Ice Cream Day. Well, you know what that means. We gotta have ice cream. So uh, after our 1030 service, we will have a little ice cream social out front. So we hope that you will join us for that. Um, Vacation Bible School is the following week. That starts on the 19th. Again, if you have friends or neighbors, someone that you think would really benefit from spending that wonderful week with us, then we hope that you will pass that information along to them. Um, our Choral Even Song is coming up on July 25th. Uh, that'll be a wonderful opportunity for us to bask in beautiful music and enjoy that time together. And then on August 1st, we'll be celebrating our 87th birthday. Um, after our 5.30 p.m. worship on that day, we'll be welcoming Opera Memphis to join us and we'll have a lovely evening of music on the Garth. And so we're really looking forward to all of these wonderful opportunities that we have to come together in fellowship and in worship. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Worship the Lord in gladness and come before the Lord's presence with song.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Together let us speak the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. David and all the people with him set out from Baal, Judah, to bring from there the ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, and who is enthroned on the cherubim. They carried the ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of of Benadab, which is on the hill. Uzziah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, were driving the new cart with the ark of God, and Ahio went in front of the ark. David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, the songs and lyres and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the house of David was rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ark in fatling. David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girdled with a linden ephod. So David with the, all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, the daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw David leaping and dancing before the Lord. She despised him in her heart. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food among the people. The whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people went back to their homes. The word of the Lord. We will speak together the psalm appointed for today, Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and all who dwell therein. For it is he who founded it upon the seas and made it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord 
and who can stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not pledged themselves to falsehood, nor sworn by what is a fraud, they shall receive a blessing from the Lord and a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. reading from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Blessed be God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his people through Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the richness of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that is set forth in Christ, the plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an, an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who are the first to set our eyes, to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of his promise, Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. King Herod heard of Jesus and his disciples, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work at him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet like the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John whom I beheaded has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, ask me for whatever you wish and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? She replied, the head of John the baptizer. Immediately, she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. God, open our ears to hear your word. Open our hearts to receive your word. Open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world around us. And open our lives to the infinite possibilities born of your love. Amen. We see a wide range of emotions in our lesson from the second book of Samuel this morning. A wide range from an exuberant, happy King David dancing with all of his might before the Lord to his wife Michael, who is looking upon the king and as the text tells us, despising him in her heart. I think scholars historically had taken a rather critical view of Michael. And this moment, this one little slice that we see of what happens with her 
in her interaction with David. But it takes a little bit more of her backstory for us to understand the complexities of their relationship and of this particular scene because it is complicated. Even before David was king, his success as a warrior preceded him. He was a strong warrior for Israel. And his predecessor as king, King Saul, had become nervous about the way that David interacted with others and the success that David was experiencing. And so when Saul's daughter, Michael, confessed her love for this warrior, Saul saw it as an opportunity. If I can just marry her to David, well, that means I can figure out how to get rid of this guy. I can figure out how to kill him. And that was Saul's plan. Except Michael really did love her husband. David had paid a very handsome price for her hand in marriage. He killed 200 Philistines for the privilege of calling her his wife. When Saul sought to come after David to kill him, it is Michael who tips him off, tells him how to escape, covers up his escape until it is truly discovered. She loves her husband enough not to want her father to kill him. But David has escaped. David's had to leave. David's had to get away to keep Saul from killing him. And while David is gone, Saul gives Michael in marriage to another man. Fast forward to David returning, Saul and his son Jonathan having been killed in battle, and the one who had been anointed now coming for his throne. And he asks for something in particular. He asks for Michael. He asks for her to be returned from the husband to whom she has been given while he's been gone. And Michael has been nothing more than a pawn between her father and the man who has pledged to marry her. If that were all of the story, it would be maybe even a little simpler, except David has taken on a whole bunch of other wives. David has children by a whole bunch of other wives. And we have no idea of what his relationship with Michael was even intended to be. Was it all just a sham? Was it all just fake? Was it all just David needing to be sure that he could control this one person to limit the number of heirs that Saul could have to threaten him in his own rule? We don't know. We don't know what Michael is thinking, except that we know that in her culture and in her time, as a childless woman, she is shamed and outcast and alone. While in the meantime, all of the other wives of David are continuing to raise children for him. Now, 
to this lesson that's before us today. They've brought the Ark of the Covenant, the scrolls from Moses. They've brought them. The very presence of the Lord has been brought into this new capital, David's new abode. And David is leading the people in worship because that is what we do when we come into the presence of God. We worship. We worship with all that is in us. We pour ourselves into that worship. And David is leading the people in being poured into that worship. And Michael is looking on, despising him in her heart. Is it really just all about how emotional this dance has become, how much he has poured himself into this dance, or does she already see, has her relationship already shown her some of the darkness of the great king? Is she aching? Is she hurting? Is she hurting in ways that she can't even express other than to look upon this king with disgust? The truth of the matter is that when we come into the presence of God, God sees and knows all that we are. Knows us in our joy, knows us in our hurt, knows us in our sorrow, knows us in our disappointment, and God still loves all that we are. I think too often we look at Michael and we, we see a reason to criticize her in that moment for not being willing to give herself into that worship, for not being able to express her love for God. And it could very well be that she is so hurt at that moment that the only expression she has is her anger and her bitterness. It's all just too much. I think on the heels, we hope the heels, of a pandemic, there's just as wide a range of emotions among people as the range of emotions we saw that day. There are folks who have found reason to celebrate and be grateful and thankful and joyful, and there are folks whose losses have been so tremendous whose relationships have been fractured, whose lives have been so disrupted that the very thought that they could dance before the Lord in praise is more than they can even fathom. And yet God still loves us all. God is still loving, God is still waiting, God is still pouring God's self into us to help us realize that even in the moments that we are most fragile, even in the moments that we feel like we may not be able to take one more step ahead, God is with us and holding us Imagine for a moment the grief of a woman who feels that she is nothing. And imagine a God loving her so much and wanting her to know how very much she is loved and valued and cared for and not alone. 
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Standing as we are able, let us affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed are you, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for you have blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Enable us by your power to be true to our calling and, the, and live holy and blameless before you all of our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We offer ourselves with all who have lived holy and dedicated lives. Lord, make us to be numbered with your saints. We give thanks for the life and witness of John the Baptist. We pray for all who have been imprisoned for their faith and for all who at this time are facing persecution or danger, for all who stand firmly for freedom and justice. We pray for monastic communities, for monks and nuns, for all leading lives of quiet dedication. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Phoebe, our bishop, Dorothy, our priest. Show us mercy, O Lord. And grant, grant us, us your salvation. salvation. O Lord, support all who seek and support others, all who care for the homeless and those in poverty, all who work with prisoners or outcasts, we pray for Joe, our president, the Congress, all state and local legislators, all judges, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and, and grant us your, your salvation. salvation. We pray for all who speak out for the communities to which we belong, for counselors and community workers. Bless our homes, our families, and friends. Support with your love all who sustain family life. To celebrate with those observing birthdays or anniversaries this week. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. God, lover of the poor, be a strength to the persecuted. We pray for those who lack the resources they need, for communities with poor medical supplies, all who lack food or shelter, any denied a, a proper education. Give courage to all who sacrifice themselves that others may live. We pray for families that are in trouble at this time. We remember 
all who suffer in body and, or mind, remembering especially the Sivia, Stuart, Lionel, Elizabeth, Kimbrough, Jim and Emily, Renee, Allison, Katie, Lauren, Marianne and Bill, Laura, Rachel, Claire, Proby, Robin, Philip, Jay, Patty, Judith, Brian, Joan, Karen, Jim, David, Ann, Billy, Margaret, Beth, Aaron, Adrian, Bill, Joy, Ashley, Danny, Mary, Sarah, Bailey, Ann, Emma Jean, Captain Betty, Michael, Wendy, Rebecca, John, Brett, John and Vicki, Eric, Whitney, James, Lola, Ronnie, Bob, Sarah, Gary, Lois, Tricia, Tom, Leland, Virginia, Banks, Brown, Georgia, Denise, Madison, and the Martin family, Janet and Van, Barbara, Mary, George, Irving, Jeremiah, Roy, Cynthia, Carol, Pete, and the Western family, Belinda, Randy, Ty, Angie, Joy, Catherine and family, Victoria's family, the Howard, Howard and the Ugetsi family, Mimi, Harry, Kate, Hartley, Lewis, Greg, Jasper, Linda, Ava, Don, Marcia, Charlene, Hub and Jen Miller and family, Emma and the Hatton family, the Trans and Mezik family, Elmer, Peggy, Jim, Susan, Paul, and the Horton family, Joy, and the Rout family, Mary, Margaret, Freeman, and family, Jackie, and the Arvello family, Owen, Lynn, Christine, and the, and the Pastor Myers family, Sid, Pat, Miriam, the Weird and Massey families, Nancy, Deb, and the Martin family, Mary Louise, Joanna, Connie, Bob, and the Vizina family, Lorraine. We pray for all who suffer from fractured and broken relationships, for all who have been affected in many ways by the COVID-19 throughout the world, for those who face danger and oppression, for all those affected by natural disasters in our country and throughout the world, for our neighbors who grieve and mourn those lives that are lost in violence and mass shootings, for those who grieving the loss of loved ones following the collapse of the condominium in Surfside, Florida, and for the people of Haiti. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And, and grant, grant us your grant salvation. Us. Glory to you, O Lord, for you give us the victory in your triumph over death and have life eternal. We pray for the saints who stood firm and witnessed to your love. Show us your mercy, O Lord and grant us your salvation. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. You 
You may be seated. What follows next in our service is the Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper, a time at which we gather at this table to nourish our bodies and souls with the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're invited to join us at this table and to partake in this heavenly feast as we strengthen ourselves for service in God's world today and in all the days to come. We walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which has been shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of peace make you complete in everything good, that you may do what is God's will and what is pleasing in God's sight. May the God of grace strengthen your inner being through the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may be renewed for service in God's world. May the God of love fill your hearts with the love of Christ, that you may share that love with one another and with all of God's people. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and those you love this day and forever. Amen. peace to love and serve the Lord.